Hello and welcome to another Briar customization video. This video is the first in a series where I will be making a draft driving pair. This is by far my most ambitious project and I can't wait to get started. First of all, here's what I'm working with. I have two Briar Clydesdale stallions, a damaged wagon I got a long time ago in a model show, and this Briar doll that I definitely played with a lot as a kid. Before I do anything else, I draw out an idea for what I want the finished results to look like. I know, I said this was ambitious. I'll be going for a 1910s absinthe theme with black Clydesdales and green details. This video will be focusing just on the horses. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the wagon, doll, and harnesses. So as I said before, I will be using two Briar Clydesdale stallions. While this mole is cute and definitely has its charms, I think we can improve it. First I look at real horses and the pose I want to replicate. I then take pictures of the model and cut it up digitally to see where I should mark for cutting. Once I have a good plan, it's time to chop. I'll be using my Dremel 4000. Make sure to wear a proper respirator, glasses, gloves, and clothes that cover your skin. You don't want to mess around with hot plastic and fumes. I start off with sanding the seams down with my sanding drum. This guy has some pretty crazy seams since he's an older model. I'll be going over them again with regular sandpaper, but this gives a good head start. I'm also sanding down his mane and muzzle since I plan to sculpt my own. Next I take my thin cutting disc wheel and remove the main decoration. This was super satisfying. Here's me also doing it on the second horse. The little tail has to go too. I will be moving the head and neck so I make cuts to allow the movements there, as well as in the front legs. You may have noticed lines around the legs, and yes, I am cutting them off. All eight of them. I will be sculpting eight legs. Oh boy. <laughs> this will help make the horse taller and more accurate to the breed, as well as allowing for more feathering details. I promise it's worth it. Once I've made the necessary cuts, it's time to reposition. Using my embossing heat gun, I slowly and carefully heat up where I want to bend the plastic. I make sure not to hold it on the same place too long so it won't bubble. Once it's sufficiently hot, I can carefully bend it into where I want and promptly baptize it in an ice water bath just off camera. I make sure to look at the edited model as well as photos of the real horses while I do this. Once I have bent everything where I want, I add sturdy wire to the legs, for support as well as an armature. I make sure to drill in as far as I can into the leg. My drill did keep getting stuck, but I kept putting it forward and backward until it worked itself out. I draw out a rough idea for the hooves and bend the wire to fit inside. I make sure to stand the horse up and make sure everything is even and balanced. I then take photos and draw out an idea of what I want digitally. 
Next, I can start bulking the legs with tin foil and hot glue. I make sure to not go too far up the legs since the epoxy will need to stick to the plastic to be strong. Now I can start adding my Abe's two-part epoxy and get to sculpting. I did one leg off camera to give you an idea of what I'm going for. I cover the foil completely and smooth it with water. I also recommend 70% rubbing alcohol for even smoother results, but I didn't have any on hand for this project, so water it is. I smooth it into the general shape that I want and start adding details like the hoof and herring. I use an X-Acto knife, silicone sculpting tools, and of course my fingers. I don't need to worry too much about the fetlocks since they will be covered with hair anyway. To make all the pretty feathering that Clyde's tails have, I roll up noodles and place them with my knife. I smooth them into the leg and then add more detail. To sculpt the hooves, I make sure to put down a piece of foil first to make sure it's nice and flat with the ground, also so it doesn't stick to my work surface. I then repeat this for all the other legs. For the front leg that is lifted, I sculpt the hoof first and let it harden before doing the rest of the leg. This will give it a more sturdy support and so I don't mess up the hoof while it's still wet.
With the legs finished, it's time to fill in the neck. I stick in some masking tape and fill gaps with hot glue to give my epoxy something to sit on. Once everything is all smoothed and filled out, I make sure to add some shoulder wrinkles. I noticed the neck was sticking out a little bit far, so I let everything harden and then sanded it down off camera. Now I can finish bulking up the right places and adding details like the neck muscles. forget the chest muscles. Now to tackle the face. Once I've covered the area, I start with the nostrils. Not adding too much detail yet, but just to map the face out. Next I add the lips. It looks like a crazy clown horse until I blend them in. I don't have too much advice for faces other than keep fiddling with it until you're satisfied. I think it's still one of my weaker areas, and practice makes perfect. It's important to have references. Horse face anatomy is pretty confusing since a lot's going on under there with little fat to cover it.
You can see I'm jumping around a little bit time-wise to hopefully make more sense, but I do like to work on different areas at a time to come back and give a better perspective. For the gaps made by bending the legs, I not only fill them in, but also add some more muscle definition, since they're in a different pose now. Now I can start on the tail. I'll be doing a cut tail instead of docked. It's a pretty debated practice and I can't speak to it as I don't have a draft horse. But I like sculpting hair, so I'll be doing it undocked. I drilled a hole into the tail remnant to insert a wire for extra support. I add my epoxy to cement the wire into place. Before I get too far on the tail, I sculpt the mm, anatomy. bulk up this little stick tail. I add the hair noodles in detail pretty much the same as the hoof feathering. I did add a little bit more wave to the tail.
I want to do a fancy tail decoration. Some draft horses have these neat ribbons sticking up for shows. I add the wire that will be supporting the ribbons and attach it with a blob that will be the little tail braid. I can carefully sculpt the braid detail with my knife. Adding some more hair to the tail. Now for the ribbon sticking up. Next is the tiny triangle parts. For the actual ribbon parts, I cut them out on my hard surface and push them together over the wire. To finish up the tail, I add ribbon pieces flowing off the sides. Now we can jump back and focus on the mane. I start out with wrapping wire through holes I've drilled at the top of the neck. I make sure to do this before I filled it in. This wire will give a good base for the hair and ribbons. Like the tail, the mane will also have decoration. I'm doing ribbons like these. Since they are so thin, I will need a wire inside for strength, as well as to support the epoxy. I twist the wire and make sure they are spaced evenly.
Now I can go over them with my epoxy so they will stand straight up and be stronger. After that hardened, I snipped off all the extra wire. Same as with the tail ribbons, I add little triangles to the top. I go in with my knife to give them lines of texture. After I let all those harden, I can go in and make the little bow ties, same as on the tail.
Time for the mane. I made sure to put in a wire before the ribbons because I wanted the mane to flow off of the body a little bit. I'm going for a windswept look, so the mane isn't just hanging down. Using this wire, I can add, you guessed it, more noodles. Next I can sculpt the ribbon that comes through the bridle path. With draft horses hitched to a wagon, the ribbon indicates which sides they go on, with the ribbon facing on the outside. Next I can add the braiding detail along the sides of the mane. I lay down a strip of epoxy and detail the braid with my knife.
And now I sand. I start with 80 and then go down to 100 and then even down to 400 grit until I'm ready for primer. I'll be using this Krylon Grey Primer, though it's quite picky and the weather has to be perfect or it get a weird texture. Once it's dry, I can see more places that need to be sanded. And once I'm satisfied, I add another layer of primer. And after that's dry, it's time to airbrush. The airbrush I'll be using is discontinued, but it's an Aztec brand. For paint, I'll be using this Model Air Acrylic with a touch of thinner. I'm going for a black Sabino coat, but I want to add some dimension and not just paint her full black. For this first layer, I'll be covering her in this dark grey base. I don't bother with the legs since they will be painted white anyway. Once that layer is fully dry, I can add some dark shading. It's hard to see in this footage, and it's even subtle in real life, but it adds an extra dimension to the muscle definition. I add just a hint of highlight for extra pop. I also add a touch of brown to the mane and tail for sun bleaching. You can see it better here in this shot where I'm adding the white markings. For paint, I'll be using this golden brand acrylic and thinning it with water to avoid brush strokes. It's important to have multiple photo references for markings, even if you aren't planning to do the pattern exactly, just to see how the hair flows. I'm using some lovely images taken by Luda Stock on DeviantArt. I'll link them below. And now it's just a lot of time, patience, and small brushes.
make sure to paint everything I will be adding color to with white so it will show up better. I built up the coverage with multiple layers of white. I lost count, but probably around 10. Once it was all dry, I sealed it with some Mr. Super Clear Matte Spray to prep for this next step. I want some yellow on the feathering to add realism. I draw on lines with some soft pastel and blend it around with my makeup brush and fingers. This pastel was pretty cheap, so I have to make a few layers in between to build up pigment. I recommend getting higher quality pan pastels if you can. I use that same method to blush the muzzle and underside. With my smallest brush, I add the green details to the ribbon. I also do a few layers of this to build up color.
The decorations have a straw texture to them, so I paint them a cream color. I know this looks a little crazy at first, but for her eyes I paint little brown parentheses underneath with tan on the inside. Then I fill in everything else with black, leaving a little bit of white showing on the outsides. I also add a little dot of white for shine. The legs were looking a little bit too yellow, so I added a layer of white over top. Onto the hooves. I do a few layers of this cream color. Next I mixed up various shades of grey, cream, black, and white and apply them in various size strokes going down the hoof to make stripes like these. I waited for some nice weather and sprayed everything with my Krylon matte spray. Of course this girl needs some fancy shoes, so I'll be using this Tester's silver enamel paint. I make sure to paint three little dots for the nails on each side. I'll be using this Liquitex gloss for the eyes and nostrils. I do a few layers on the eyes for extra gloss. And now we're all done! Let's see the finished result! Here's the before. And here's the after. And now I get to do it all again, so buckle up! Just kidding. Here's the second horse all done.
So now I'm officially done. Well, for the horses anyway. I think they look so good together and I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for the wagon doll and harness.